Welcome to Poland on a Plate, featuring today's flavors of Polish cuisine. Today I'm joined by Chef Don Zajek of Crest Creek Country Club and we'll be making some of Poland's favorite dishes including New World Mushroom Soup, sautéed salmon with dandelion greens, and a breaded pork chop with Napa cabbage and a mushroom demi-glaze. And later I'll show you my recipe for caramelized Brussels sprouts with Krakus ham. Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham. here with Chef Don of Crest Creek Country Club in Naperville, Illinois. Thank you for joining us, Chef. Thanks for having me, Basha. Please tell me a little bit about how your restaurant aligns with what we're doing here at Poland on a Plate. Well, when I was hired at Crest Creek Country Club, a lot of the members associated my last name, Zajac, with uh, Poland. And uh, we have many events during the year, whether it be uh, Chinese, Mexican, Italian, and they ask, can we have a Polish night? And we do a Polish night every year. Oh, that's so fun. So now today you can share with us some of your new Polish recipes. Absolutely, we're taking a classic mushroom soup. We're taking the elements from classical Polish mushroom soup and we're giving a new world twist. All right, Jeff, tell me what's first. So first we're gonna sweat our vegetables. Okay. And what we have here is what's called a mirepoix and it's uh, carrots, celery, and, uh, and onions. And what we're sweating that in is uh, whole butter. And why are we using a whole butter? Um, because the uh, lactic acid in the butter actually breaks down the uh, mushroom. So it's very important when you're making this to use that butter versus an oil. Absolutely. All right, so our soup base has started over there and now we're turning our attention to the mushrooms. And today for the mushrooms, we're using a shiitake and we're using a portobello. And if I could have your assistance, uh, yeah. we're going to clean the portobello mushroom. We're actually going to take uh, the fins out of the portobello. And why do we take the fins out? Because the, the fins are, are a little bit bitter. So mushrooms are a really important ingredient in Polish cuisine, not only because of their prevalence throughout the country, but also this strong tradition of foraging and going out mushroom picking. So while these mushrooms are a little bit different from what you would typically find in Poland, we're keeping very true to that same idea of using what is local and fresh around you. And what's important with the mushrooms too, it's about flavors that you enjoy. So you don't have to worry so much about tradition, use what you love and you'll put your own stamp on this dish. Absolutely. So it's important, uh, you know, we want the size of the mushrooms when we're cooking it uh, to be somewhat uh, consistent relative to cooking. Uh, we don't want big pieces and small pieces, uh, but we're gonna end up pureeing the soup. So, and when we puree the soup, we're gonna find that uh, it's gonna release a lot of flavors. So it's not so important to worry about getting this perfect. You just want them to be all generally the same size so that cooking is at the same rate. Correct. So we've rough chopped our, our mushrooms and we're gonna add that to our stock pot. We're just gonna st stir this up a little bit and we're gonna let it sweat. And like we talked about before, uh, the mushrooms will start to break down with the butter and we'll be releasing uh, those flavors. We have really flavorful stock. Uh, we're using a vegetable stock and I've made it with celery, carrots, onions, garlic, tomatoes, um, a lot of the components we have at home already. Uh, and we're, we're talking about building flavors with the, this soup, meaning uh, a lot of recipes just call for water, but we're using a vegetable stock. Our roux, which is what we're making here, mm -hmm. classically a French term, uh, but that's equal parts of butter and flour. And today our flour, again, is the garbanzo flour. Uh, it's actually made from uh, ground chickpeas. So these are ground up garbanzo beans, which Fresh. like you said, also chickpeas, same thing in hummus, very versatile ingredient that maybe not too many people are familiar with using in their own kitchen. Right, so if we're gonna ask you to add the flour to sure. the, the pot, and we're gonna let those vegetables cook out with this, um, th with this roux. You can also see when we're building this soup, uh, what's known as a fawn is collecting at the bottom of the pan, and that's really developing a lot of flavor, a lot of bottom to the soup, 
and which fits perfect in with the mushrooms. All right. So we're gonna take our, our vegetable stock. So again, I'm scraping from the, the bottom using a, a wooden spoon, and I'm scraping from the bottom, getting all that, that fawn and having releasing that flavor from the, uh, the bottom of the pot. And it's, you know, there's a fine line between browning and caramelization and burnt. Yeah, we want, we, <laughs> I've we, crossed it sometimes. <laughs> you, know, we, you know, we want that caramelization. Again, you know, building that flavor. So <clears throat> uh, what's important, we need to bring this up to a simmer uh, and let that, uh, what's called cook out for, you know, a few, cut two, three minutes. So when we puree the soup, uh, we're go I'm gonna puree it to a medium consistency. We've pureed our soup, and now we're gonna check for seasoning. So we wanna make sure all the notes are there, that we can still we taste the shiitake, we taste the oh, portobello. Oh, this is wonderful, chef. This is really great. You can taste all of those mushrooms. And actually, I even taste a hint of that garbanzo flour in mm -hmm. there. It really does bring the earthiness, and that texture is spot on. We're good on salt, we're good on pepper. We're good, okay. it's perfect. So we're going to present our soup. So we see we have a, a great consistency with the soup, and now we're, yeah. this, we're gonna add some of the garnishing elements being uh, dill, parsley, okay. and a little bit of sour cream. So we're going to, uh, this is fresh Italian parsley, a little bit more flavor than the, the curly that you see sometimes. And we're gonna chop up a little bit of dill here, giving it that old world flavor. We see a lot of dill in our, in our cooking, whether it be curing our potatoes, our soups, uh, on our pierogies. And uh, so we're adding a little bit of that element to our mushroom soup today. And then we're just gonna take a little bit of our cream element. How beautiful. And again, it's a, it, it's a new world cream soup. We don't have the heavy element. Uh, it's lighter, healthier, uh, and it's good for you. Thank you so much for sharing this recipe with us. This is Chef Don's New World Mushroom Soup. Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham. We're back and we're diving into another Polish favorite, salmon, with Chef Don's special ingredient, dandelion greens. And not often do we see dandelion greens in, in our cooking, but they're really a Polish favorite. And just the wonderful green separates themselves from a mustard green or a collard green. They're very, uh, that take a long time to cook. The dandelion greens are very easy to prepare and very quick to cook with. Uh, also great in iron and calcium and protein. Oh, so a lot of nutritional benefits. Absolutely. Easy to prepare in your kitchen. And a little personal connection. My grandfather actually came over from Krakow, Poland uh, and raising his family, one of my dad's jobs was to actually pick the dandelion greens in the yard and they would have those for dinner. Very cool. So it's really, for me, it's, it has a personal connection, but also very consistent in what we're doing today. Uh, we're, we're looking at healthier and uh, we're looking for a, a, a new take on old world favorites. Yeah, so even though people might not think of dandelion greens in connection with Polish cuisine, it is one of those very typical old world ingredients that was used in a lot of these very classic dishes. Absolutely. So we're using salmon today, or wosos as you would say in Polish, which is a very popular ingredient due to its prevalence in the Baltic Sea just in the north of the country. This is a really beautiful color. What kind of salmon do we have here? Well, this is a, actually an uh, Ora King salmon. You know, we always, at the club, we always want to be conscious of sustainability. Uh, and all those, this is a, a farm-raised salmon. Um, it's a uh, sustainable salmon, uh, again, raised in New Zealand. It really has a, uh, actually quite often used in sushi. So we're, we're melting our, our butter here, our whole butter, mm -hmm. uh, and that's gonna really give a, a great flavor to the uh, salmon. And once the pan gets hot, we'll introduce the salmon to the, uh, to the pan. But one thing uh, for taste and for presentation, let's let the salmon cook. Too often people are so interested in peaking and is it done yet? <laughs> yeah. So in order to get that really nice color, we have to just set it down and forget about it for Let a little bit. Let it do its thing. You get that, that uh, nice sizzle. Yes. And a, and a piece like uh, this, this will take, you know, we'll, we'll cook it for approximately three, four minutes on one side, turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. And again, that's fine. We're using, like you said, a sushi grade salmon. Right. So while that's cooking away, should we start with our dandelion greens? Absolutely. And what's really easy about the, with the uh, dandelion greens is there's, there's not a whole lot of maintenance to the greens. We've washed these greens 
and we're going to just cut the uh, just the very ends off. Uh, they're a little bit uh, woody per se, and um, we're actually going to keep this underneath, and we're going to put that in our compost uh, to be able to break down. And uh, we're just going to give smaller pieces, uh, unlike. Um, things, uh, greens like mustard greens and collard greens that we spoke about earlier, uh, you can use the, uh, the whole rib and oh. when, we, when we cook it down. So normally with the other greens, you're peeling off the leaf from the stem. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all completely edible. Great, because this is a, it's a smaller, more delicate leaf and the rib is not as bitter. Absolutely. So what kind of a flavor do dandelion greens have that is different than, let's say, a collard green or a mustard green? Well, like a lot of greens, it's a little bit on, on the bitter side, mm -hmm. hence the reason, for, you know, sautéing a little bit in the whole butter. Uh, but I would compare them almost to a, a sorrel that okay. has that little lemony bite uh, oh. and really fresh, which I think lends itself really well to the salmon. You have the, the, the fattiness of the salmon, you have the brightness of the dandelion greens. It really just makes the dish pop. Great, right. yeah, I can see how that lemon component would go beautifully with the fish. Absolutely. And we're gonna turn the salmon. Oh, that looks Got beautiful. A nice color on the salmon. And you can see how it's like cooking part of the way down. The color is changing on the salmon. Absolutely. And again, to accentuate flavors and to build flavors is a white onion. Uh, versus something like a Spanish onion, mm -hmm. uh, a white onion is a little bit sweeter. And what's also available are ramps, and, and ramps are uh, in the springtime uh, very very readily available. And mm -hmm. also adds that onion garlic flavor. Uh, I wouldn't add onions and ramps, I would just add the ramps. If you're going mi to mix it with the dandelion greens, again, to give a little bit more complexity. Okay, and for anyone who's not familiar with a ramp, it's essentially a wild onion. And if you're from Chicago, you know them very well. That is how our city got its name. So you could substitute that in, especially in the springtime, just making use, again, this locally sourced and what's available and fresh now. Absolutely. And uh, again, getting away, you know, I know we're all in a hurry, but you can see by the preparation, uh, freshness doesn't take more time. No. Uh, yeah. And then convenience of, of popping vegetables into a microwave. So we're going to take out the salmon. I think it's done all now. Right. As with any protein, uh, we want the protein to rest, and when it rests, the juices have an opportunity to spread itself throughout the protein, mm -hmm. um, often with steaks. You, know, you see that, that red center, and uh, this way, by, by with the salmon resting, it disperses the flavor back into the uh, protein itself. And uh, again, we're going to um, have it just a, a little bit of butter. We're not gonna use all this. You can actually smell the salmon already. It smells really beautiful. And really, the other ingredients speak for themselves. You shouldn't have to work to smell an ingredient. You know, you yeah. shouldn't have to lean into something to smell. It should meet you and greet you. <laughs> I like that. So we're not looking to brown the onions. We're just looking to, you know, kind of soften them a little bit, get them a little translucent, and then we're going to um, uh, add a little bit of salt and pepper. Um, All right. First, we're going to add our dandelion greens. And you'll notice, you. again, it's not going to take a, a lot of time. It looks like they're turning even greener now that they're in the pan. Oh, I just saw an onion jump. <laughs> <laughs> is so this kind of the same concept as when you're like blanching something? Just this quick heat? Yeah, is gonna... just a quick heat. Uh, almost like you're, you know, when you cook a spinach. You know, you're just looking to wilt it a little bit. And if you notice, we're adding the greens to the same pan that we cooked the salmon in, just to bring that cohesiveness and bring all those flavors together. So we'll begin the plate up. So we have our wonderful bed of dandelion greens. We'll place our salmon here. I've made a, um, a light, lighter um, bacon dressing. And again, we'll use the same pan that we okay. did the salmon, we did the greens, just to heat that up a little bit. And this is a dressing that you've already made, so we're just right. warming it through before plating. I like the combination of bacon and salmon. And who doesn't like bacon? Nobody. <laughs> It smells wonderful. I think that's the best part about cooking with bacon is your whole home gets that like bacon scent. Absolutely. <laughs> Put the dressing over the top. Our last little touch, we're gonna accentuate with a little bit of lemon. And this will tie in, you were saying, our dandelion greens do have that little hint of lemon to them. So again, just keeping those flavors, freshening them up throughout Absol the dish. Absolutely. This looks amazing. I can't wait to try it. Thank you so much for sharing this recipe. This is Chef Don sautéed salmon on wilted dandelion greens. Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham.
Welcome back to Poland on a Plate. During this segment, I will feature a delicious recipe using Krakus, the true imported Polish ham. I've always liked Brussels sprouts, especially tossed with butter and breadcrumbs, but one day I decided to experiment with Krakus original Polish ham and there was no going back. My trick is to crisp up the ham in a little bit of butter and top the Brussels sprouts right before serving. First, we're going to start with our onions. I have about a pound of onions that I put on the stove here with a little bit of butter just to start them cooking down, caramelizing, similar to how you would start an onion soup. When you're first putting the onions into the pan, you really want to make sure that you let them sit for at least five minutes so that they start to get that really deep brown color. If you're stirring them constantly, they're not going to get the caramelization that we're looking for. This step takes about 15 to 20 minutes. They have a little bit of a head start here and you can see how cooked down they are. They have this great brown caramelization. This is exactly what we're looking for. So we'll leave them and we're going to move on to our ham. I really like using Krakow's Polish ham in this recipe because you get that really great authentic ham flavor. All right, so I have a couple tablespoons of butter that I put into our pan. And to that, I'm going to add a few slices of Krakow's original Polish ham. I'm using the original Polish variety. You can also use the reduced sodium or honey ham variety. We're looking for kind of like a bacon crispness, but with our authentic Polish ham flavor. I have here some Brussels sprouts. You're gonna buy them whole like this, and you'll wanna wash them, and if it looks like the outer leaves need to be removed, you can just peel them off. This one looks fine. I'm just gonna remove this woody end to it, and then I'm gonna cut it in half. This is gonna be very helpful when we're sauteing it. It's gonna give us a lot of that color that we're looking for, and it'll help it soften a lot quicker than if we were to leave it whole. So you're just gonna keep going until you've gone through about a pound of them. All right, these should be good. I'm gonna set them aside to cool and drain for a little bit. And we'll turn our attention back to the Brussels sprouts. So just add them to the pan like that, season with a little bit of salt and pepper, and then we're gonna let them cook until we start to get some really great brown caramelized flavor and they soften. Give it a quick toss. You can see we're already getting some of that great brown flavor from the ham transferring to our Brussels sprouts here. All right, everything's looking great. Let's start assembling for our final plate. I have a bowl here and to that, I'm gonna add our onions, that great color and the aroma is just wonderful. You can really smell a lot of that sweetness coming out of the onions. And now our Brussels sprouts. And I really love the green color. And now just to heighten a little bit of that sweetness from the onions, I'm going to add a little bit of honey, about two tablespoons. And for just a little kick, I have some smoked paprika. I like the smoked version over the other. I just feel like there's a little bit more depth of flavor. You're looking for about a quarter teaspoon of this. Then we're just gonna toss to combine and then we'll plate. I like serving this family style. So just get a nice plate and spoon on our Brussels sprouts and onions. That looks beautiful. And then the star of our dish, our Krakus Polish ham. I'm just gonna slice it up a little bit so that we have bite-sized pieces. We got a lot of intensity when we were cooking our Krakus ham on the stove. It really just focuses that flavor and it's a really wonderful component to this dish. Just gonna top it like this. And this is my caramelized Brussels sprouts with Krakus ham. You can find this and other great Krakus recipes on our website at polandonaplate.com and find Krakus ham at fine delis near you. Bon appetit, or as we say in Polish, smacznego. Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham. We're back and Chef Don is going to share another Polish classic, breaded pork cutlets. We all remember growing up with the uh, breaded pork chops and we're going to put a modern spin on it today. I like it. So how are we going to start? Well first if I can ask you to help me season the uh, pork cutlet. And you were saying before that you get these from a local farm? Correct. They're locally sourced. We dredge that in a little bit of rice flour. It gives a little bit more uh, crispiness. Uh, egg wash, and then we use panko breadcrumbs. And I use panko breadcrumbs because it gives a little bit more texture, uh, a little bit more complexity to the dish. 
What we're doing here is we're taking a, a small bit of lard. I know, you know, lard is not necessarily a, a, a first choice for healthier diets, but I think it's really important for the flavor uh, that we're using lard in this recipe. And again, we're just using a small amount. And while we're uh, browning this uh, pork chop, we're going to do a little multitasking here. We're going to add some butter uh, in our dish. And again, we talked earlier about uh, how butter works in breaking down the mushrooms. So we're going to add our, these are cremini mushrooms, baby portobellas, if you will. And uh, we, we love that big, hearty flavor that goes well with the pork chop itself. If I can ask you to season, Basha, the mushrooms, a little bit of salt and pepper. And I like that we're using the two different fats here. We have the lard going and then also that butter. Absolutely. And you can just sell, smell the, the aromatics. Yeah. You know, I, I wish I wish we great. had smell a vision <laughs> And we'll let those mushrooms and we'll let that, uh, we'll let that pork brown for a minute. So we, we're getting a, a nice colorization. We can see our our Ooh, pork chop turn over, it gets a nice golden one. brown. And we're cooking our mushrooms. Uh, and there, the pork chop is picking up that flavor as well. So we have our pork nicely browned. And we're going to take uh, the dish and we're going to put it in the oven. All right. Goodbye, little pork chop. And you said about eight minutes? About eight minutes at 400 degrees. Next, we're going to uh, wilt our cabbage and uh, we're going to heat up our potatoes. Uh, the what potatoes. Would you like first? Oh, we'll do the potatoes. Okay. And you can, this is a, uh, a new potato. You can pick a fingerling potato, a Yukon Gold, whatever potato that you enjoy. A smaller, um, thinner skinned potato, though, is yeah, what we're looking yeah, for. Yeah, you're not going to use like an Idaho baker. So we're going to take our butter uh, and put it in the pan. And then, Basha, if I can ask you again to help me season these potatoes. Mm -hmm. A little bit of salt. And these potatoes and, aren't raw here, right? You cook no, them a little bit correct. first? Correct. Yeah, the, they're, they're blanched. This is something that people can prepare at home. Uh, in advance, and uh, uh, as we have the uh, cabbage, then we can, uh, again, cut that ahead of time. The cabbage is not gonna take that long to cook, and we'll let our potatoes set. And today we're using sort of raw Napa cabbage. Correct. Uh, just again, uh, you know, just something a little bit different. Uh, we normally use, a, we see in Polish recipes, sauerkraut, mm -hmm. uh, and today we're gonna use a, Which a little- Which is a pickled cabbage. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I love a good sauerkraut with onions and caraway seeds. And, yeah. But we're trying to, you know, a little different uh, new world here, new take on uh, a classic. And okay. I, if, Basha, if I can ask you to season that again. All right. Again, we're seasoning in layers. Uh, we're not seasoning at the end. Uh, as a chef, to tell you the truth, when, you know, we see customers using salt and pepper at the table, you feel like you haven't done your job because it, it needs something else. Okay. When it's going out to the, to the guest, uh, you want the dish to be finished, uh, and you don't want them wanting more salt or more pepper. So we build the flavors inside the kitchen here. So I think the pork chops are done. Let's check them in the oven. All right. And we'll we'll see the uh, the mushrooms as well as at the same time have really taken on um, a lot of the flavor of the pork and vice versa. Look at that beautiful golden brown. Beautiful, yeah. Basha, if I can ask you for a little side plate so we can let this pork rest for a sure. minute. Sure. And we're going to create our sauce. This is a, a demi-glaze. Uh, it's a veal demi-glaze, which is just a, a fancy way of saying a, a veal stock reduced by half. Okay. And we're going to introduce that into our uh, mushrooms. And the only thing that's left here is we're going to chop up a little dill versus just Putting it on top, we're actually going to mix it with the potatoes, and you Very know the natural classic Polish side dish, the dill potatoes. But we're adding it in the pan uh, to wake up, the, bring out those oils. There's natural oils in the herb, so versus just sprinkling on top in the finish. Again, we're building flavors, uh, and we want to uh, uh, again wake up those herbs a little bit to accentuate those flavors. Oh, you can smell it right away. I Absolutely. love the yeah, yeah. I love the aroma of dill. And again, we're using a fresh herb, so we don't want to cook too long with it uh, because it'll cause it to turn bitter. Um, so it's fresh. If I could ask you for the plate up. Sure. Thank you, Basha. So we'll take our cabbage and just put that right in the center. We've got our beautiful center cut pork chop. Oh, that dill on those potatoes smell awesome. It does smell really wonderful. And we're just going to uh, Nap the sauce over the top of the pork chop itself. You have that great balance of the freshness with the herbs, the heartiness of the pork chop, 
and then that really great earthy flavor from the mushrooms. So we have an old world dish served in a new world way. Thank you so much for sharing your delicious Polish dishes with us today. This is Chef Don's breaded pork chop over wilted Napa cabbage with dill potatoes and a mushroom demi-glaze. You can find recipes from today's program on our website at polandonaplate.com. Bon appetit, or as we say in Polish, smacznego. Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham.